Hi, Mark Johnson, Taylor Judy coming to you live from the golf simulator room at Hillcrest Country Club. It is a gorgeous October afternoon, about 75 degrees outside. However, conditions are changing rapidly as the, the, the year progresses. So this room is going to get a lot more activity. Um, we just wanted to go over a couple of, of things for you to get you um, up to date. Again, if you haven't used a room in a while or if you have not ever used a room, to give, it, give you some basic parameters. First and foremost, booking a reservation, just like booking a tee time for the golf course three days in advance. Reservations open at 8 a.m. and bookable times are from 8 a.m. until 7.15 p.m. in the evening. Um, we highly suggest, especially with the weather changing and this room is gonna get more and more activity, please make sure you book a reservation, number one, so you don't come into the room and, and find there's no simulators available for you, number two, so our staff can uh, get your bags up here for you so you can play golf and whatnot. Um, very simple to do, just go into the golf tab on either your app or your computer and uh, go to the golf simulator reservations and book yourself a time, it's super easy. Uh, so just to cover a, a couple of things, when you get to the simulator room, the, the computer screen will probably look similar to this. It is touch screen. Um, <clears throat> generally speaking, it will be on this full swing golf app. You can manipulate the screen by either hitting the arrows or you may click and drag to whatever game you want. If you're playing golf or going to the range, we would suggest this full swing golf app. It's going to have a little bit better graphics for you. Um, the range is going to be a little bit easier for you to identify in terms of the data that you will get. The other golf app you can use is this E6 golf app. If you're playing golf, there's uh, a lot more golf courses available to you to play than, than the full swing app. But again, the graphics are a little bit uh, not as good as full swing. So let's go back to full swing. Click on that. <clears throat> um, it takes just a second to load up. Once this comes up, you have your choice of the range or the golf course. I'm gonna just click the range. I wanna do a range session here. You can see the lights turned on on the, on the actual simulator. It is defaulted to a right-hand player. You can easily change that to left-handed player by hitting these three buttons here and then change your dexterity in this area here. I'm right-handed, so I'm just gonna leave it right where it is. <clears throat> so the screen is gonna be Really simple to read. This is gonna be a, a full-size view of the range that you're at. This is the, the view that you're seeing. This yellow line here, which is also visible on the screen, is gonna be your target line. <clears throat> and then this is gonna be your data area. So before I hit a golf shot, <clears throat> you can see I have the golf ball placed on the far right-hand side of the actual hitting mat and a little bit uh, towards the front. The top of the screen, there's gonna be a green check mark up there that's telling me that the computer has recognized the golf ball and it will now record the shots. If the golf ball is not in the correct area, there will be a red X up there and whatever shots you hit won't be recorded by the computer. So we'll go ahead and hit just a, a little shot here to get some data and then we can talk about it. So you're going to see a couple of things. You're going to see the actual flight pattern of the shot. A video is going to come up. It's going to show you impact. You can pause the video if you want. You can see exactly the positioning of the club face at impact. <clears throat> the data that we're going to get here is pretty cool. So the top number is going to be your carry yardage. To the right of that is a total yardage. The bottom two numbers underneath that are going to be your speed numbers. So we have club speed and ball speed, those two numbers directly affect total yardage. So the higher those two numbers are, the higher that number is. We have path and face degree. Path is gonna be how the club is coming actually into the golf ball, if it's coming from the inside or if it's coming from the outside. And then the second number, is the face closed or is it open? Underneath that we have Smash factor. Smash factor is again another speed number for us. Smash factor is uh, ball speed divided by club head speed. 
basically what that number is telling us is how much energy is being transferred from the head of the golf club into the golf ball. The higher that number is, the higher these two numbers are, and the higher that number is. So all of that, when you're working on the range, you can take into effect of why am I not hitting as far as I, I sure would like to. You have launch angle. How high is the ball being launched from the actual shot? If you've taken a lesson from any of the professional staff here at Hillcrest, you know that if we can launch the ball higher, it will carry further. So think about it this way, two balls at two different heights, as they descend, which one's going further? Clearly the higher ball. So launching it higher is a good thing. Uh, lastly, we have your spin numbers, backspin and side spin. Backspin being how hard is the ball moving backwards in relation to its climb. And then side spin. And lastly, <clears throat> apex. How high did that ball get in the air? If you're coming here to work on your golf swing, all this data is highly useful to you. Um, if you want any help in deciphering this, please reach out to one of your professional staff. Happy to help. Um, if you're here to just play golf, you know, when at that start, when I hit range, we just go to the golf course. You can choose whatever golf course you want and start playing. But uh, just a, a brief overview for you about the golf portion of the simulator. I'm gonna turn it over here to Taylor Judy here in a second. He's gonna show you and the kids some games. Take care. Hi, I'm Taylor Judy, assistant golf professional here at Hillcrest. You just heard from Mark about how to use the simulator, the guides, guidelines for the simulator, but also how to read the numbers on the, the golf por portion of it. What I'm here to talk about today are the other games that we have on the simulator as well. So we're gonna go back to that main screen where Mark was before he chose the full swing golf. And when you get there, there's gonna be a whole bunch of different games you can choose from. Mark touched on the full swing and the E6 golf, but I'm gonna talk about the other games. So we have a soccer game and we do have soccer balls here. We have showdown golf. So that one's gonna be more target golf, um, something fun to do with your friends or your family, a um, little bit more target based rather than the real golf. And then we have rugby. We have a QB challenge, which we do have footballs for. Lacrosse is on there. Home run derby, which we have baseball bats in the closet right over here for as well. Hockey sticks, or hockey, which we do have hockey sticks for. Visual football, so a little bit different than that target football. This is gonna be more of a real football game. And we do have footballs, as I mentioned earlier. We have cricket, carnival games, bocce ball, basketball, uh, a normal baseball game. So instead of that target kind of fun baseball, we have a full baseball game where you can play a complete game of baseball. And then the last one I'm gonna stop on and actually show you how to play is zombie dodgeball. It's a very popular one. We do have dodgeballs as you can see and I'm gonna show you how to play. So you s get to the game that you wanna play, you hit the icon, and once you get to that loading screen, all you have to do is choose your level. So there's graveyard, downtown, cornfield, carnival, and castle. So I'm gonna do the castle level. It'll load us into the game, and I'm just gonna show you how it'll, how it'll play out. So the goal of this one is to knock down the zombies before they get to you. So I'm going to take my first throw. Looks like I got one of the zombies and a freeze ball. So I'm going to try that out. And I hit the fence. So that wasn't a good throw. All right. So as you can see, my throwing game is not very good, but I uh, did show you how to play some zombie uh, dodgeball. And it looks like I'm about to lose because that zombie is going to get me.